Good morning, everybody, and uh, welcome to Wednesdays in the Word. Every Wednesday at 11, we're going to have either a staff member from Crosspoint or one of our elders share a message with you for about 10 minutes from the scriptures. We are trying to have each month a focus at our church, and our our focus in October is prayer. And so I want to uh, start us off this morning talking about prayer from a very familiar perspective place. It's often called the Lord's Prayer, Matthew chapter 6. If you have your Bibles, you might want to follow along, or if not, I'll just read the passage to you. But before we actually get into the Lord's Prayer, which we won't get into today, I want to talk to you about some of the stuff before the actual prayer. So let me read uh, beginning in verse 5, Matthew chapter 6, verse 5. And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, For they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father who is unseen. Then your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not keep on babbling like pagans, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them. For your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. So let's put this in context just for a moment. This is the Sermon on the Mount. And in chapter 6, Jesus begins teaching about some some disciplines, some spiritual disciplines that people were already doing. And He was telling them how to do it. For example, if you look at verse 2, so when you give to the needy, and He talks to them about how to give. And Verse 5, when you pray, and then he talks to them about how to pray. And then in verse 16, when you fast, uh, he talks to them about how to fast. So in each of these cases, Jesus is assuming that the original audience was doing these things. They were giving, they were praying, they were fasting. And we might assume as believers that we are doing those things as well. Well, at least we're giving and we're praying. We're not so big on fasting. Most of us are better at feasting than fasting, but there's some effort to to fast as well. And so the assumption is we're doing these things. And notice in the prayer section that I just read, he says that phrase several times. Verse 5, when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites. And then uh, when you pray, verse 7, do not keep on babbling like the pagans. And then in verse 9, he begins to tell them how they should pray. So let's talk about a couple things as we as a church are focusing on on prayer this month. It's really important, I believe, for every believer to have an active and growing prayer life. However, if you you were to survey a hundred of us believers, you'd find that most of us would say that our prayer life is not super fulfilling. We're not very disciplined at it. Our mind wanders a lot. Uh, We don't know what to pray about. We struggle with prayer a lot. So I think that one of the things that we have to do before we even start a life of prayer is uh, begin to just deal with the concept of what is prayer and what does Jesus expect from us? If you read a lot of books on prayer, you get the idea that you have to get up at 3 o'clock in the morning and spend hours and hours a day in prayer. But is that what Jesus is teaching? Well, let's take a look at it. He begins by saying, don't be like the hypocrites. Now, what do the hypocrites do? Well, they love to be seen in their prayers, and they love to be heard. And Jesus said in verse 5, they've they've received a reward in full. All the reward that they're going to get is the people that notice them. God is not impressed or or pleased or thrilled with the way that they pray. And he says in verse 6, and this is, I think, what's key for us. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father who's unseen. I think one of the the keys to prayer is to have a regular time and place to pray. A private place. A a place where you can be alone with God, where where no one will see you or, or know that you're even praying. And that's the, that's the attitude, that I'm going to get alone with God and talk with God and also listen to God, commune with God. That place could be um, a living room, a sofa, a love seat, a, a recliner. 
It could be, I know a lady that used to pray all the time in, in her laundry because she had a lot of kids and she knew that was a place that the kids wouldn't go. And, and the noise of the washer and the dryer, you know, would drown out the other noise. I'm assuming they were old enough to take care of themselves. She didn't just neglect the children, but that became a place for her. Uh, I enjoy praying at the church. When I get here uh, in the mornings, I'll, I'll walk uh, I, in, the, in the parking lot if the weather's nice or around the church building through our worship center. Sometimes I'll prayer walk in our neighborhood. I discovered, at least for me, that I have to be doing something. It's very hard for me to sit in one place and be able to to concentrate and, and pray. So find a, a place that's quiet, that's private, and, uh, and begin to, to talk with God. And then verse 7 uh, encourages us that we don't have to keep on babbling. And so this idea that you have to pray for a long time for it to be effective, and, and we just mindlessly say things over and over and over again, repeat ourselves and, and think that God's impressed with the length of our prayers, that's not really it either. Uh, Jesus says clearly, do not keep on babbling like pagans, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. And then verse 8 tells us that we don't have to be like them because our Father already knows what we need. So you get the idea that prayer, although we're, we're communicating with God and we're touching heaven with our prayers, prayer is primarily for us. It's primarily for us to, to think about God, to focus on God, to to, to be um, committed to God, to share with God our hearts and our needs, knowing all the while that we don't really know how to pray as we ought. Uh, one of our staff is going to talk about Romans 8, 26 later on, that the Holy Spirit uh, prays for us with sighs and groans too deep for words. So we don't really know how to pray, but you can make a prayer list and, and you can begin by uh, praising God and repenting of your sins. We use this little pray acronym. Praise God, repent of your sins, ask of God, and yield to God. That's a, a simple way to pray. So, so prayer is a, in some ways is powerful. Like I don't necessarily agree that people say, well, there's power in prayer. Well, there's power in God. And, and the way that we connect with God is through prayer. The way we express love to God is through prayer. Prayer. The way we confess our sins is through prayer. The way we ask for God's will to be done and his name to be glorified is through prayer. When we need direction and we need guidance and insight, we, we ask God for it. And God loves to give to us in prayer. So the one thing I'd like for you to think about doing this week is just to begin, if you don't already have a good habit, begin to, to set aside a daily time and place for prayer. And, and you don't even have to be legalistic about the time. I mean, your time might just be sometime in the morning or sometime at night or sometime in the middle of the day. That in your mind or on your calendar, I think it helps for a while to schedule this, you have set aside a time and a place to get alone with God. And don't feel like you have to be there for hours. Uh, just talk to Him and, and think through this acronym of praise Him first, uh, repent second, ask third, yield fourth, and you're done. It doesn't have to be a long time. And when you look at the, the model prayer, the Lord's Prayer that's given here, it's pretty short. I mean, it's an outline, I think, but a lot of people just pray it as it stands. And I, I want to just close with this prayer because uh, I think it, it fits the pray acronym. This then, Jesus says, is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. What's that? That's praise, right? Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we've also forgiven those that sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. So you see in this model prayer, not in the order, but you see uh, praise, repentance, asking, and yielding. And that's a simple way to pray. So uh, I'm going to pray for you, and uh, let's really focus on God and, and prayer, not just this month, but always, but especially this month. God, thank you uh, for this time together and your word. Help us to be a people of prayer. 
Lord, to cultivate a, a heart to want to know you and to, to have the discipline just to set aside the time and be consistent seeking your face. Lord, we love you and uh, we thank you for the privilege and the honor that prayer is, that you've told us we can come boldly to the throne of grace and that we'll receive uh, help in our time of need. So thank you for that honor and that privilege. But God, be glorified, I pray, in our lives. In Jesus' name.